Hello. Hello. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Today is a very, very momentous day. We you finished. A, I finished a script. <laughs> you did. I finished the script. Uh, today we are covering Lewis Hutchison, and I have to give my editor some credit. Uh, this was edited by our good friend Starfish. Thank, uh, uh, yes. A, he, a godsend, I swear. Because <laughs> it would have been fucking terrible without him. He's a beautiful boy. <laughs> yes, yes he is. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Today, we are covering the first and most prolific known serial killer in Jamaica's history, Lewis Hutchison. Most sources repeat the same information that can be found on Wikipedia and Murderpedia, so those will be our main, our primary sources. Though, okay. our, though a notorious serial killer, not much can be found on Lewis Hutchison, being that his reign of terror was during the late 18th century. Born 1733 in Scotland, little to no information can be obtained on his early life. Besides, it is still believed he studied medicine before his time in Jamaica. We can assume this is where one of his two nicknames, the Mad Doctor of Edinburgh Castle, came from. The other being the Mad Master, which comes from the fact his occupation was labeled as a slave owner. He arrived in Jamaica sometime during the 1760s where he legally obtained his estate, but apparently had many accusations surrounding him, though I could only find a couple. One being that he received a all shady his... shitty-ass white man. <laughs> yes, yes, a <laughs> shitty-ass white man. One of the accusations shady. being that he received all his head of cattle illegally from his neighbors. Either he would just gather the strays that would wander from the pens, or he would actually have his slaves steal them, maybe both. That's a hanging offense in America. Oh uh, yeah, 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 it is. Especially and, at this time. And but the most important accusation and the reason we are covering him today is cold-blooded murder. Yes. Now I really oh. wanted to paint a good picture of his estate to set the scene. Unfortunately, there is only a tiny bit of information available. Edinburgh Castle can be found in Pedro District of St. Anne. It was in the perfect location for the Mad Bastard, being it was located on the main road and the only place to rest traveling out of St. Anne's Bay. The actual house itself was a small two-story square cobblestone building with two cynical looped whole towers placed as placed diagonally opposite corners. Its doors are never clearly laid out, assuming from the information it had a front door and a rear door near one of the towers. The property mm. itself was mostly used for cattle pens, housing his hill gatton cattle, though we can assume him being a slave owner, his slaves were also placed outside. Yeah. Again, yeah, I'm, I'm sure this guy didn't didn't set him up with like a fucking casino hotel. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Again, not much is known about the horrors that possibly took place here within the quote unquote castle walls. Fucking. <laughs> so I want to state some... during my research, hmm? I was on the fence as to if Hutchison was a real serial killer or some or just some douchebag owning people and stealing his neighbor's yeah. cattle what led me to determine that he was a serial killer was the finding of the sinkhole known as Hutchison's hole ooh yes but some sources do state that he might have used a hollow mm. cotton tree trunk but nonetheless, I'm going to go oh. with the sinkhole. <laughs> okay. Hutchinson's hole is where the mad Scott would dispose of, dispose of his victims' bodies after bleeding their bodies dry. I, I am assuming he would bleed his victims like any other game, hanging them upside down, slicing their necks, and letting the blood okay. pour into, the pan, pan, into a painter bucket. 
to to give us a better image, like what was this general? What was he doing this to just the slaves, or did he have other targets? Um. So uh, uh, I I go into it. I go into it. Okay, 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 okay. All right. I'm just I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to picture who he's, who he's getting. All right, I got you. I got you. I will go into it. I will go into it. Sadly for us, okay. only a two accounts of Hutchison's crimes survived the test of time. One being pinned by Reverend George Bridges in the Annals of Jamaica, Volume 2, which is based on a testimony from one of his former slaves. The other being written by Annie E. Cook, who is the great-great-granddaughter of Dr. Jonathan Hooten, a neighbor and survivor of Hutchison. Give the small amount of information I have on him, I feel we have enough to get into the terrible crimes of the Mad Doctor of Edinburgh Castle. Just in time for me to get my food. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm... Do you... Get that All right. outside going. I, I can keep going? Yeah, yeah. Alright. With only two surviving accounts, I can't go into a level of detail with his crimes I would like to. But nonetheless, I will do my best to cover as much as available. Shortly after his arrival in Jamaica, disappearance of cases of travelers started to pile up, and suspicious ran rampant in the neighboring populated areas. Tra Ooh, travelers, okay. travelers would have to stop at Ed Edinburgh Castle and end up getting shot in the head, drained of their blood, and dismembered to be thrown in Hutchinson's Hole for vultures to feast on. Hutchison is labeled a, as a sport killer, thus he killed for the sick, simple thrill of taking another life. Any gender, race, shape, size, or income level were free game for the mad prick to shoot, bleed, and dismember. The standard. So he's like that dude from the most dangerous game. <laughs> uh, sort of, sort of, it, but he didn't like. <laughs> Uh, when it came to him, I can actually, I, I don't, I, I wish I'd went into it a little more. I don't, but I can go into it now. How he would do it, mm. you would basically just be walking by, and if he felt, and if he just felt like it, boom, you're shot. You're just shot. He, he, he would snipe you from one of his towers. Like, that's, I, it's like that's, that's why he constructed the towers, was solely so he could <laughs> snipe people. But if, you know, there was like a group of people or he just, you know, I guess he just felt, you know, like he wanted to like cre increase the thrill, he would invite you in and he would like, you'd be just chilling in the house, you know, resting. And then one, uh, unfortunately, you know, with group travelers, one person would be like, eh, I'm going to just stay a little bit longer. Y'all, y'all can go on. I'll, I'll catch up with y'all. Sadly, being at Edinburgh Castle, that wouldn't be the case. You'd get shot in the head as soon as you were alone with the, the dude. Crazy. Yeah, he, he was definitely uh, an asshole. Mm -hmm. The standard victim would be shot in the head, then it is said Hutchison would bleed the victim's bodies. It is speculated it was to feast on their blood, chopping their bodies up for the whole. We can only Im imagine the ways he used the blood, since we don't have any testimony telling us how. He was active from his arrival in Jamaica in the 1760s to his death in 1773. Now how could this mad asshole be active for so many years? The most simple and only explanation is fear. Some sources say people mm -hmm. feared Hutchison so much they avoided him at all cost. How they avoided him and the extent to which they did is never properly mentioned. Of course, his slaves added their own testimony and mistreatment and of his reputation for evil. It being the 18th century in Jamaica, I can assume the main population at the time was predominantly white, so I don't see how they were believed. However, for mm. some reason, this increased the level of the fear in the community had for the man and official. The, the, the ruling class was white, but it definitely wasn't the. Uh, the well, that's that's people. what I'm saying. That that's definitely what I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. The the main yeah, population. That's I'll what I'm. I guess I guess I shouldn't have worded it. The main population, 
but yeah, yeah you, I, I'll just clarify. It. I, I understood what you're you're saying though. The level of f okay, okay, okay. However, for Sorry, some reason, <laughs> this increased the level of fear the community had for the man, and officials would be hesitant to serve him with a warrant. Even when Hutchison attacked Dr. Hewitt, yet still survived needing a silver plate in his head, w was able to testify against the mad doctor. Nothing was done, and he re remained free for some time. The dude literally, like, it, it was one of his neighbors, and dude just left to go on a trip, and Hutchison was like, I'm going to shoot this guy, and literally just shot him. And he was able to get away, though. Eventually, a brave soul finally got the courage to face the Mad Doctor, that soul being the young English soldier named John Callender. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for Callender, Hutchison calmly shot the young soldier on sight. Oh. <laughs> However, this was the kill to get Hutchison finally caught for his crimes. Okay, so it sort of worked out, just not... <laughs> oh, that's kind of a fucked up thing to say, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dude's still a hero. I'm still giving him. He, he just, yeah, I'm giving he, him props he, because he, he was literally the only he, one he brave enough to better. actually go to the castle with the warrant. You know, everybody else was like, I, I ain't gonna fucking go to that bastard. Unfortunately, it was in martyr form. It yeah, it, 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 he was definitely a martyr. Yeah. Hutchison was finally was Hutchison was fully aware this kill was the one to do him in. So before Calendar's comrades could come for him, he fled. He planned to go by sea and made it south to Old Harbor. There he boarded a ship and almost got away, but luckily. The Royal Navy was on watch for him, commanded by Admiral Rodney. Yeah, you don't fuck with the Royal Navy. <laughs> or a motherfucker named Admiral Rodney. <laughs> yeah, that dude, that dude probably couldn't hunt down Captain Jack Sparrow if he wanted to. Oh yeah, for sure. They managed to intercept Hutchison's, shop, Hutchison's ship, yet out of desperation, Hutchison jumped overboard. Though he wouldn't get far because his Scottish red hair made him extremely <laughs> easy to spot. <laughs> ginger over Starport. <laughs> Goddamn ginger. <laughs> the Admiral was congratulated by Jamaica's House of Assembly for his assistant in the capture of Hutchison which was put securely behind bars. Alright. Now it's time to cover the trial. And during said yeah. trial, it, is re it was revealed that he did not act solely on his own. Mm. Planters named James Walker and Roger wow. Maddox were said to have participated in the murders of former William Lickley and the local schoolmaster Timothy Cronin. Were they hired by him? Um, they didn't go into detail about it. To be honest, they just said that they participated in those two murders. Because you said that you said that they were like you said they were a planter. And so they yeah, they were like planters. Like so I'm guessing they're like a, like I plant. So they're they're like farm hands, but all they do is help with the crop. So that's basically what a planter is. So yeah, it just just and actually Maddox's wife, Nordix Maddox, Miss Susan Connell and Miss Elizabeth Thomas was forced to watch Cronin's death while they were being held in stocks. And not much mm. else is said about these random people. It's just for some reason we know that these three people were forced to watch and stocks hmm. though apparently miss thomas was put on trial fortunately it is said that she was found not guilty but yeah she she was actually put on trial 
Damn. As the legal proceedings, including the search of Edinburgh Castle, went underway, tales and evidence of devilry and debauchery that almost defies the imagination surface. Those these details seem to not have been able to survive the test of time. 43 watches and a large amount of clothing belonging to the victims were found at the estate. His slaves also eagerly relinquished the long fear-held silence, giving great account to each crime. Sadly, though, all the slaves' test statements were judged as hearsay unfit to stand in court. This being the case, Hutchison was only ever tried for, one single murder, for the one single murder of John Callender. Hmm. Oh, really? He only got for the one? For the one. For the one. Yeah. He was only ever tried for the one. Damn. <laughs> yep. And Hutchison wouldn't go out without swinging, though. Hutchison wouldn't go out without swinging, though, for he pleaded not guilty and was defended by one of the island's most esteemed lawyers, which I could not find a single name for. Could not find the wow. name for that fucking lawyer. However, this would be proved to be useless in his defense, for his slave's testimonies was sustained in court even though they were labeled as hearsay. So they were still evidence against, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, that for sure he shot this man because of what they, for, for, about because of this hearsay. Mm. Uh, that's literally what happened there. He was found guilty and condemned to death by hanging. He was later hung in Span in Spanish Town Square. It was 1773, and the records of his trial are in the National Archives. As one well, I'm, last, I'm, I'm sure the streets, just, just, just the street foods were just getting passed around all all that day. That was a big, that was a big day. Watch watching Hutchinson get hung. <laughs> oh yeah, that that was a major. That you know they were fucking super fucking happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fuck yeah. <laughs> As one last defiant act, he had funds left to get a two-line epitaph inscribed on his marble tombstone. It reads as follows. The sentence in pride and malice I defy, despise their power, and like a Roman, die. His final wishes were left ignored, for there is no tombstone to be found with this inscription on it. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> that is all I can unearth on Lewis Hutchison. We can only fathom the terrible crimes he might have done. Edinburgh Castle still stands today as a haunting ruin. A reminder for those that live on Jamaica of the mad doctor, the mad master of Edinburgh Castle, <laughs> and the horrors that splattered the walls, the sinkhole filled with bones to be evidence of what happened. This is the story of the mad Dr. Lewis Hutchison. Let it be known, there are bones in Hutchison's hole at Edinburgh Castle. Dun, dun, dun. Fuck you. Fuck yeah. So, you reminds me a lot of H.H. H. Holmes, just of the sporadicness. Uh, oh, yeah, but he... he uh, this man. <laughs> He definitely was more, this is my land, and I, I'm not leaving, and no one's going to fucking make me leave, try to make me leave. And then, as soon as he was like, oh, shit, yeah, now the army's going to come for me, he he hightailed it out there, because they would make him leave. <laughs> He's like a le less ambitious H.H. Uh, Holmes. Like, like as soon... Like, I just want to stay home, you know? Yeah, I just want to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> shoot people from from my backyard like they're squirrels not even the back yeah yeah just <laughs> just a common game i uh i it's not said what he did with the blood but it it is uh i i must have not said that. i must have skimmed over this because it it's said that he might have like used it to like he might have eaten it and stuff or maybe possibly bathed in it. Oh, you never know. Never know. You never we can know. only assume because he did bleed. It is said that he did bleed his victims. Mm. But, uh, 
trying to think of what uh, why else he, he would if it you know if it wasn't cannibal related. Uh, well, just, just that's what you do to your game is you bleed it before you. Because mm -hmm. he didn't use the bodies. No, no, he did not use the body. He did not eat the bodies. I, I want to make that wholeheartedly clear. Or like he used them as trophies. It seems. Like it if like he just dumped them in the. If my hole. research is is to is to be believed that that there should be to this day a a location that has a bunch of just a bricks strewn around and there should be like a hole or a tree trunk or something that just has human remains in it and just on the island in Jamaica <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, there's going to be a lot of lack of evidence because what, what year is this? You said 17, uh, this, uh, the 18th 16? century, the, it's uh 1760 to 1773. So it, it was a good, it could have been, um, t a minimum of four years and a maximum of 13 years. So yeah, that's why the evidence is going to be real shaky. Like if they did find anything. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not going to be too thorough on it. Which yeah. I I I'm upset that I chose this as my first piece, but it it was a good, you know. Oh, I think it's a good warm up one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fun. I I feel that it, it got me in the groove. I I I I feel confident, more confident in my writing now, especially now that I have someone that will edit my scripts. That that's a mm -hmm. game changer. Yeah. All right. So, it this will be a bye bye. Bye bye.